In this video, we're going to quickly build a page from scratch using Thrive Architect to show you how easy this tool is to use and how amazing it is at building pages in WordPress. Let's dive right in. So to show you what it can do, I'm going to actually build this page, which I've already built before we started recording, but I'm going to show you how powerful and easy it is for someone who doesn't know coding to build this kind of thing. It takes a little while to get used to where everything is. That's normal with any tool, with any software. No excuses there. That's just the way things are. If you're going to create something you need to learn a little bit, there is a learning curve, but it's powerful, it's flexible, and it's relatively easy to do. So this is what we're going to build, and I've set up a blank landing page, which we're going to use to create this. So the first thing we need to do is create a full width section, and that's using the background section here. And so we add that in, and then when you click on it, you get all the editing options of that particular element. And the first thing we want to do is check this uh, checkbox or switch on the top to make it full width because we want the image that we're putting behind the text to be fully across the page in all situations. So that's the checkbox you have to check. And the content that you put in here is still limited to 1080 here, but the picture will be full width. So then we scroll down to background style. We can add in a particular color, an image, a gradient, so a sort of a slight change in color or a particular pattern. But what we're going for is the picture. And we're going to choose a picture I've already uploaded and we're going to set that as the background. And we're going to do that as a stretch so that it applies to the full sort of stretched width of the page. So the image always looks good. Um, that's something that's really useful to do. And let's put a minimum height in there so that we can see the image. You don't need to do that once the content's in there, it'll expand automatically, but let's just do that. And now we need a heading. So if we go back and see, we need two headings and a button. So we need to bring a heading down and then you can grab it on this little icon here. That's one thing I'm not a huge fan of so far is this tiny little icon to drag and drop and to edit. But yeah, let's hope that they improve that because it's a little bit fiddly to hit with uh, the mouse cursor, I find. But other than that, very good. So we want to center. So there's a few elements in the headings which are still on the actual element, which I think should be moved to the panel on the left because everything else is on the left. And this is the only element I've seen where this is the case. So it's a little bit strange, but let's just accept that this is on the left. And we want to make this uh, bold as well, I believe. And then we also want to make this a particular uh, capital, which we can do down here with this text transformation. And we want to increase the letter spacing and we want to make it white. And I've already saved some colors in here. You can save your favorite colors. So your branding so that you can always access them. You don't have to remember the color codes. We can make that white. Uh, that's actually the background that's gone white. So the font highlight, we actually want to remove that. Apply. We want to change the text to white. So the font highlighting is still there. Could be some bugs in here. This is a brand new tool. So let's actually remove that heading element. Seems like we've got some bugs and let's put it back in again into the right spot and center it, capitalize it, change the color to white, space the text out. As you can see, the text is more spaced out. In the test that I've done, it's also a little bit bigger, which we can do there. And what's also really cool, if you've got a slightly light background, you also want to put in some text shadow just to bring out that text. So let's just increase the text shadow. Uh, where is that? Add shadow is in here. So we've just done that. And as you can see, the text shadow makes it look a lot clearer to read. So we want to make now another element there so we can repeat that. And I used a different font here so we can change the font. We can use Google Fonts, which is really cool. And we're going to use a font 
I believe it was called uh, Impact. So you can search for the font. Was it not called Impact? All right, let's just check what it was called. And it's called Limelight. So excuse my memory there. So we will do that in Limelight and apply. Seems like, again, there's a few bugs, but. All right, so we want to change the letter spacing back to normal and the font size back to a bit smaller. And then what you can also do on the fly is you can change the spacing here using your mouse, which is really cool. You can use the arrows, you can use text, you can lock and do all of the elements. If you press this lock in the middle, you can change the spacing of all the elements at once, uh, which is really cool. Or you can also just click on here and then just drag your mouse to space out the heading, which is really nice. So you can see exactly what's going on. All right, let's just grab a button, add that in there. Let's increase the font size. And let's move the button up a bit and change the text. So we've basically got now the same thing we had here, slightly different heading, but you can see more or less we've created the same thing. We could tune that a bit more, but we don't need to. Now we need to create a three column section in here. So you can make it full width or restrict the width. And with generally with text, you want the text to be 1080 or less in case people are on a laptop. You don't want text stretching across the page because it's not readable. So what we want to do there is we want to go back and create some columns. So let's drop in some columns here. And let's make one third columns. And then what I want to do is put in a content box so that I can copy the content because I'm going to be making, as you can see here, more or less very similar content with slightly different text. So once I've made it once, I want to copy it. So once we've got a content box in here, we want to put in an icon and I'm just going to search for that. And there's the icon. And let's put in, uh, I think it's a star in here and then change the color using our favorite color. And then what we want to do is we want to put in a circular background. So what you do for that is you put in a background style of a specific color. We need to put in some padding. So we go into here, we press the lock so we can add padding to the whole lot. And we need a bit of opacity in there. So let's change the solid color to 50% opacity. So it looks about the same color as that one, maybe even more. Or actually, let's just change the color a little bit more. And now we need to make rounded corners. So on the borders, we actually want to change the roundness. So let's type in 100 and see if that works. And that's about right. It's a different color. I need to pick the color, but uh, let's increase the padding a little bit more there. So now we want to do a little heading. So let's throw a heading in the content there. Make sure we get it into the box. Let's change that to a heading three. Center it. Change the color to our purple color. And then we could write the heading in there. I don't really want to do that. You can start to see we're creating the same thing here. Let's make it bold. Seems like bold is a bit buggy. They need to fix that up. And we can decrease the spacing at the top here by dragging the mouse. We need to turn the lock off. It's not working. And then we want to put a paragraph in below that with some text. Here is your text. And then let's just center that 
and then we want to put in a button. So that's pretty much what we have here. We just capitalize this is the button and let's capitalize the text. So now we have a content box with that. What we can do is we can duplicate the content box and you can even save these things as templates and reuse them. You can even categorize your templates, which is really cool. So if you're creating content all the time, you can constantly reuse these packaged elements that I've created here. You can make any kind of shapes, columns, layouts, and use it as a kind of a package and dump it into a new page or a post, which is really cool as well. And then we can repeat that again and drag that into our not very good at dragging because they've changed the way that works. So there's our three columns. I mean, we can change the icons and choose the different icons if you want. That's pretty quick to do. You can change your heading. I'm not going to do all of that. I'm going to save your time watching this. The next thing we want to do is actually create another background section. But what I want to show you with this one is we're also going to put a picture on here. I'm going to use a different picture. Let's use, I think it was this one I used. So we want to make that full width. And let's add a bit of minimum height to that, just so you can see the text. And what we also want to do on top of that is add another layer. And we're going to add that as a blue layer, and we're going to make it opacity 60. So as you can see, this is really easy. I've designed pages like this in the past, and this is not easy to do to layer color on top of an image. Normally I need to go and do it in Photoshop and do it separately instead of doing it within the page, and that was really painful. Now you can do it, and as you can see, I've almost created this. I need to throw in a couple of headings. Let's just copy these headings on the top here and dump it into our page just to show you how easy that is to do. I'm not going to mess around with that, that anymore. So now we have another section with another piece of content that we have branded using our blue color here, our sort of bluey green color. So that was really fast to do. Normally that can take me hours to do in a web design. Now what we want is the map. So let's just dump in the map. Uh, I can't see it, so let's just type it in. Map, that's really nice. Just click on it, dumps it in centers on New York. I'm sure you can change the address here. Let's type in somewhere around me in Zurich and save that. And then the map will go to Zurich, which is really cool. You can put your address in there of your business. And then what we want to do is we want to put in a heading above here. We want to center it. We want to bold it. We want to change the line height a little bit and reduce the padding at the bottom. So bring that up a bit. And then we want to change the font to our branded font color and also make it capital here. So you could type in here uh, how to find us. And then what else do I have? That's what I typed in there. We also have an icon. So again, we can use the icons and just copy this little guy here and then drag it down. So the drag and drop is really cool. We want to change the spacing a little bit and increase the spacing at the top and decrease the spacing at the bottom and change the icon to some kind of transport. Don't see a car or anything. Let's use a road. So that's really easy. And so you can add anything in here really cool. You can optimize it. You could even change this to a two column and then put your address next to that. So let's just do that really quickly. You can actually drop elements on top and next to them. And if you do it next to it, it automatically splits it into 50-50 columns. And then you can adjust them here, change your address. Uh, business address and let's change 
the padding down a bit. Change that, <coughs> excuse me, to bold. And using our branded color. And let's reduce it a little bit. And then you could just write your address below that using a paragraph element 23 my street New York United States and then you could put in a call us button etc etc and you can also do things like preview it in mobile and do slight adjustments to fit into mobile, which was not possible before with this builder and is quite difficult on other builders. You can also hide elements if you don't think they're working on mobile or tablet. If you think you just want to get rid of them, you can actually just hide them. So at the bottom here, we can do a quick preview on tablet and you can see exactly what it's going to look like obviously we have some problems with the headings so what you do then is you change the font and this only applies to mobile so if you go back to your normal view and I've, even though I've reduced the heading here and I need to fix that better put more space below the button if I go back to desktop it's still as it was before so what happens is you can change your page view for desktop which applies to everything you can change the tablet view which ap applies to tablet and below and then you can change phone which just applies to phone sizes so you can actually adjust everything to work on the three different sizes which is really cool because things start to get squished or stacked on top of each other in the different views so basically there's a quick overview of how powerful and easy it is to adjust and create pages from scratch with Thrive Architect using all the new features. They've basically fixed up all the issues with not being able to access things. And as you can see, it's insanely powerful, really easy to create, super sexy designs. And you can even use their templates. They've got a whole bunch of uh, landing templates which you can use as well. You don't have to use the ones that I've shown you here. You can actually use their ones and create a page from one of their pages and then just adjust it. I've just created this from scratch to show you how easy it is, but you can also create one from one of their templates, which makes it a lot faster as well. So there you go. It's really cool. It's relatively cheap purchase. I believe it's about 69 bucks one off purchase. If you already have Thrive Content Builder, you will get upgraded automatically and they're rolling out this editor across all their products because they use the Content Builder within Thrive Leads, within Thrive Testimonials, and all of that kind of stuff. So super cool, super powerful. Any questions or any problems, give me a yell. I have a lot of experience with this tool and I love it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like the tool or you're interested in buying it, I've got a link to it below. I get a small commission from that. You don't pay anything extra. That's just something to thank me for spending time creating these videos for you guys. So I really appreciate that. And if you like these videos and you want to see more Thrive stuff or more SEO stuff, subscribe in the link below the video or on my channel page, and I'll see you guys in the next video.